before we get to the garden update, I just wanted to show you the most pitiful rhododendron that we have out here. The ice storm that we had in February just about killed this plant. There are almost no leaves left, but surprisingly, two flowers have bloomed. We've got several once very large and beautiful rhododendrons all along our driveway. And for me, it's kind of a legacy from my Uncle Mike. So I'm really hoping that these rhododendrons pull through. They are sending out some new leaves, so I think there's hope. To help it along, I'll be snipping off those flowers so that all of the plant's energy can go into new leaves. I'll also be putting down some of this special rhododendron food. There are just about a kajillion pine needles down around here, so the soil is pretty acidic, but that's actually what rhododendrons like. Their natural habitat is a shady forest. So some people might be wondering why we can't just plant some of those plants that are in the, the greenhouse out underneath these, these ground covers. We could. I mean, it'd just be... <sighs> these ground covers the setup I have is easier on the beds than it is, it is on, I'd have to get, figure out how to get this to work with my new beds and I just haven't, haven't finished building them yet, let alone getting them all structured. So the new in-ground ones are where I'm going to put mm. the squash and cucumbers, except for the cucumbers which are going to go kind of in these beds. And the cucumbers go up the trellis, and so I can't put them under this because they're Makes going to sense. grow up. Makes sense.
really happy with how this um, Chinese cabbage is doing because usually it gets kind of really eaten by bugs. But this year it's doing a little better and hopefully I'll actually get to eat some of it. But I did have some, probably a small squirrel or something crawl in here the other day and dig up onions and things like that. You can see there's one here that's been disturbed. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. Our squirrels are really annoying. They just go looking to mess things up. It's like Trying to keep those wet or at least damp so that kind of deters it a little, it seems like. I think when they're sort of dry, they're in that little seedling clump and it just is really easy for them to mess with. Mm -hmm. Just before I turned the camera on, Wendy was explaining how a squirrel seems to be digging up some of the flowers that we have planted along the back edge of this, this in-ground garden. Well, I said it before, I really like the look of these in-ground squares that you've created with the deep compost system. Yeah, we'll see how it does. I definitely want to put my greens and stuff in this garden like I did this year, I think, because we've been seeing a lot of bunnies. <laughs> not in my cages <laughs> wild bunnies with little bunny short ears so they there's actually a couple of them two of them living under this big tree right next to the garden so that's annoying but yeah I may end up putting my live trap out and sending them to a field somewhere to live live their day somewhere else there are actually so many rabbits out here broadly. I don't know that relocating is a very realistic option. When I'm walking up and down the road, just, just for exercise every now and then, I'll see rabbits all the time. Not as often, but we do see deer out here as well. We've never seen the coyotes get up this far close to our house. But if we're getting deer and rabbits up here, that's always a danger. There's a lot of possum. I hate the possum. That's another thing I was going to mention. You may remember from some of our videos before where we were dealing with a possum. We caught it in a live trap and relocated it. Well, there's a couple more possums now. So we've got the live traps out again. We'll see if we can get rid of them again this time. Your carrots are doing good. Yeah. I planted them really thickly because usually they don't grow. Okay, now there's a lot. <laughs> Do we need to thin them out or just uh, let them go? I'll wait until they get a little bigger and then we'll have some small carrots for a while and then they'll get bigger, so. Yeah, I'd rather eat the small carrots. Than Remind everybody again why we have these uh, hazelnut shells or acorn shells, whatever they are. Hazelnut. Well, they're supposed to. They're supposed to get rid of slugs or prevent them from being able to access the plants. But I'm I'm not finding them completely effective. You can see from this here that we've still got some damage. Yeah. Let me see. This was a lower leaf and obviously in contact with the ground, so that's why it is so riddled with with damage. Yep. So I'm just trying to keep keep an eye on it. 
and pull them out like this. There we go. Luckily, these plants did manage to get up and big enough before we really started to see problems with the slugs. And I've been putting sluggo out on the borders around the beds and a little in the beds after I kind of after it dries out a little bit. So I'll do it again tomorrow. And I think as long as I stay on top of that, that really seems to help because I've still at this point in the year only seen really small slugs. Usually by this time of year, I start having great big ones that I could go pick off a dozen big ones off of a bed this size and give them to the chicken. So, but they're, they're still small enough that I can't even really go find them and pick them like I sometimes would do. So that's, that's good. I, I think the, I'm keeping the, the edges with the sluggo and putting a little bit in the beds just to kind of pull any slugs that are actually already in the bed from living underneath something or something like that has been more helpful than than this has been so um because i've got this other bed here with my broccoli in it and oops sorry brian <laughs> <laughs> the test. I didn't I didn't put the shells in there and I've been putting a lot more of the sluggo just around it and I'm noticing that that this bed is you can see the leaves are all looking really pretty nice so um, yeah, that's just from transplant shock so that's not a thing there's a little bit right there. Now, this bed obviously isn't as full looking as the other one. Yeah. Is that just because they're planted a little more sparsely or? Uh... No, I planted them later. Um, another thing that happens is when your plants are maybe not doing quite as well, that's the ones they attack. So you'll notice this one has a lot of holes in it. It's next to this line and it's also the runt of all these plants. So I'm guessing that, that they're getting to it on this line and attacking it that way. Um, I'm thinking about getting rid of these things this year. We'll see. But yeah, so I do have a little bit of damage down at this end, which is probably just more to do with where I put the slug bait than anything else. Is this a weed or is this a plant? This looks like a weed. That's a, it's just crabgrass. Yeah. This is a plant. Well, so is this, but this is crabgrass. <laughs> that's crabgrass. Look at that root. Yeah, that's a long that's, root. That's, that's how it's getting into my bed. Look at that. Yep, growing okay. all the way in. <laughs> You'll notice that these peas are all roughly the same size and they're growing at the same rate, but those have all shot up and look a lot more like they've been in there for as long as they have versus these ones that look like they haven't done hardly anything. And so I don't think it's the variety. I think it's got something to do with sunshine and light and maybe warmth or something like that. But oddly enough, last year, this side did really good. And that side did like, it was opposite. So I don't know. I think maybe it has something to do with the tree coming down or something like that or but it could also just be that the temperature is, or the, how do I say this? That last year, I think it was a lot warmer in the springtime. And so I'm thinking that this bed did better because it was cooler and that did better because 
it, or did worse because it was too hot. And I think the opposite is true right now. So mm -hmm. as the summer goes on, we may see things reverse, which will be interesting. One of the trees that came down was right over here. So obviously the sun is shining a little bit more on this bed than it is that bed. But they both have exactly the same compost that we made ourselves. They both got the same treatment as far as the hazelnut shells. So gardening is definitely a process of experimentation. We'll see it works. It's not that hard. Well, you're really good at this, Wendy. The hard part is really remembering to make sure they have water and not giving them too much water and things like that. Um, and not putting them out too early or too late. That kind of thing. The things I struggle with are my timing on things. Why I have so many squash and cucumbers planted so early. Leave, leave that one. All right. Some of them have a little damage. Some of them are looking really good. Yeah. So for gardening, would you say knowledge is more important or just raw patience and perseverance? Anybody's wondering, I'll probably come back later, walk through here and pick up all of these leaves that we're tearing off as snacks for the chickens, because they love this stuff. They'd love it even more if there were slugs actually on the leaves. I don't want slugs on the leaves. I'm wishing for slugs. <laughs> yeah, that's a bad one. So what exactly do magnolia blossom peas look like, Wendy? Kind of a fuchsia color, so they'll be pretty. And then the pea will be just a regular sugar pea, but the blossoms are really pretty. Well, they're doing pretty well, and they're sending out all kinds of little grabbers to climb up our trellis here. Imagination, or are we planting more peas this year? Peas. Well, that's good because we can always freeze them and use them throughout the year.
This is not a good method for planting peas, Brian. <laughs> this is an example of what not to do. Plant them sooner. Better late than never. Oh, that's a big clump of roots there. You'd think with that many roots that it would be well established and more likely to thrive. It's going to have some shock probably. It's better when they're a little smaller, like when they're about this big. That's when I like to plant them, is when they're just, they've popped up, they've got a little bit of leaf growth on them, but they don't have so many roots. Because what happens is once they've got so many roots, then they get all shocked and don't like being transplanted. When they don't have a lot of roots, you can kind of just pull the mound, transplant it, and put the dirt around it, and it doesn't get all... Disturbed. Disturbed, yeah, that's the right word.